Hi guys, I'm Shama Maher, CEO of Scaling Retail, and today we're going to talk about the future of brick and mortar as we go into 2021. Now, 2020, yes, has been one of the most craziest, terrifying community building um, events of our lifetimes. You know, I, I can say that from a truly global perspective, we've really seen the fabric of humanity come together and the world has essentially changed. Now, as we turn our lens to retail and, and how we start to think about the future of retail, we have to ask ourselves, what is the point of brick and mortar and what does it mean and what are we going to do about it? I probably have a dozen videos talking about how much I love brick and mortar and how much I want everyone to have their own store and create this lifestyle experience. And before COVID happened, yes, the trajectory was experiential. Everyone was touching and feeling and connecting and the human connection component of shopping was so real. And guess what, guys? It's still real. And so I think that's a real silver lining. As human beings, we thrive and need that opportunity to connect with each other. But how do we do that in the landscape of retail, right? How do we do so if you have a brick and mortar store or even if you are planning on having a brick and mortar store as part of your future plans? What does 2021 look like for you? So as this video is being recorded, we are in the summer of 2020. Some states have been reopening, others have not. Things are pulling back. We've had still in the middle of the first wave and the second wave of the virus is something that everyone's been terrified and, and waiting to happen. When is the other shoe going to fall? But as we look at the store openings and closings, we can actually see a lot of innovative strategy around how retailers have adapted to the consumers. And that actually bodes really well for the future of brick and mortar retailing. So what's happened? Well, number one, we've seen a real focus on customer service and a focus on creating a customized in-store experience. So if you were someone who shopped at Fred Siegel, chances are you sign up on their website to get a private shopping experience with them. Maybe it was on Zoom. Maybe you then had a private shopping experience in the store, or maybe you shopped online and had a great customer experience when you drove up to the store and they put those products in your trunk. Either way, the moments of being able to adapt, I think are important and I think will continue. The ability to see a well merchandised store to pick out products, that relationship with that salesperson will continue to be of utmost importance. As of today, e-commerce platforms have yet to really replicate that real life customer experience through sharing technologies in terms of how they're shopping. Zoom is good, but it's not quite like being in store. And so when we start to ask ourselves, how can we approach and adapt our brick and mortar? I have the following ideas. You know, 2021, people will still be worried about mass shopping together. When it comes to creating those experiences and shopping from brands that you love, it's important to create that communication with that customer, letting them know all of the precautions, all the things that you will be taking on an ongoing basis. Again, hard to know exactly what will happen in 2021, but these steps are going to help you prepare and stay agile as things unfold. So communication with customers, letting them know that you're following regulations and guidelines as new ones come up making sure that they understand what you're offering and what you're doing as a business. I can tell you from what I've seen, a lot of the brick and mortar retailers have still maintained their regular customer base. They've actually been shopping through text messaging, through emails, and now these guys are starting to focus their attention to build their e-com platforms so it's synthesized and able to scale. As you're looking six months out and you're planning out that forecast, guys, it should take you about three months to build the strategy for how you're gonna launch marketing, launch e-com, make sure you're merchandising, getting the creative direction together, and three months of building that website. You have plenty of time today to be able to prepare for a strong e-com launch for early next year. I would not suggest rushing it. I do not suggest ever throwing resources and time haphazardly. So plan out thoroughly. I think you'll do yourself a huge favor because that digital footprint is going to become more important than ever. So what do you do with your physical space? Well, landlords and leases have had a lot of challenges. A lot of the city ordinances and state governments have been wondering what to do with these leases. They don't cover these kinds of natural disasters or crises, if you will. And they're trying to figure out what can they do on their leases. Be collaborative. 
Start to look at opportunities and ways where you can build partnership with the people who own the property you're renting. Can you renegotiate? Can you do a profit share? Is there a way in which you guys can protect each other's interests without necessarily having to cut and run? This is not one of those things where this, uh, this pandemic is affecting only one category of industry. It's affecting all industries everyone is feeling the heat at this point so the opportunity to be community-based the opportunity to negotiate to say hey i'm not going to give up on you but let's find a way through this very very important the other thing to think about is your staffing if your business shuts down brick and mortar and transitions fully digital your staff may not be well equipped for this there's a different kind of skill set that's needed in order to grow an e-com business that might mean you might either need to retrain your existing staff to become e-com or digital ready or you might be looking at layoffs or furloughs until that portion of the business comes back to life so your hiring strategy needs to be different as well your marketing as your business, your media buys, how you approach your spend will also shift dramatically. As we see brick and mortar challenge to get back on its feet, we will start to see e-com ad spends really increasing, right? Everyone's trying to get that digital footprint. However, you need to do so strategically. It's not just by throwing money haphazardly. When we're facing down the barrel of a very uncertain economic time, this is not the moment to rush into anything. If anything, you should be sitting and being patient, gathering information and figuring out strategically where you feel the best investing your time in your business, where you feel the best investing your resources. It's possible you got an economic disaster loan. If so, that could be a lifeline for your company to keep it as it is, or it could be the impetus and the capital you need to pivot it so it can become the future business you want it to be. These are very important decisions as business owners and as CEOs. And if you're wondering how on earth do I make these decisions, what's going to be the best process and format, please send us an email at hello at scalingretail.com. We've been working with lots of businesses globally on how they are iterating, pivoting, and being able to make the next best step. We may not know what's going to happen in 2021. Heck, we may not know what's going to happen in December of 2020. But what I can tell you is when you pull together the right cabinet members and you have your team, you'll be able to make agile decisions be quick, be smart, and be able to get ahead. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, bye.